What is up down and sideways, you love it. Individuals, we have returned. It is Lee Guy, Mark, Eric, and Mark here with you, beauties, rolling on through LCK action. And if you ever are having a down day, if you're not feeling so great, you say, What is ah, man, I need a pick me up. Just watch Showmaker in 2024 because this guy's smile and joy is infectious. It feels like it's been a year plus since we've seen him so happy, but I guess. Racking up pentakills on Cassidy will do that to a man. Racking up pentakills on a Cassidy, or maybe it's something called banning Cassante is another way to have a pretty good day out on the rift if you are a showmaker. Yes, D plus Kia. What a job they put out there today. What a job for Mr. Showmaker. Let's dive into that match. Yeah, first, you know, before he had that Pat Cassidy and uh, highlight, he was getting, I think he got three straight solo kills on LeBlanc. My guy is looking so unbelievably confident and i know this is just against nong shim and d plus had a tough series loss to kt rolster but i have been super impressed with this squad as a whole and they've exceeded my expectations so far the final team fight in this game one is an absolutely disgusting wombo combo with kingen looking like that world final mvp on the aa rocks it's crazy that this is how it's come forward and it's really showing us great signs early for what could be possible for this damn one Kia team. What we've got, D plus Kia with, the, with Kingen playing at that type of level. You've got the bot lane popping off with aiming, getting involved quite often. And then of course, Lucid continuing to be no, nowhere near out of place in that starting lineup in the LCK. Showmaker on that LeBlanc in the first game. Love to see AP LeBlanc back more so into the option role and getting that of course you know the difference with ad where you're poking around a little bit ap is gonna say well i'm not poking i'm just killing you that, that's just the end of the game right there that type of situation back to back weeks somebody's getting a pet to kill on d plus aiming in week one now showmaker here uh in week two but i mean this series 32 to four was the kill total 51 minutes across the two games it was just utter domination from start to finish from d plus and i think this is going to be something we can talk about a little bit of a, a trend early in the lck but it very much seems the teams that are going to be in that upper tier towards the elite category are extremely good of course and then we look at the rest of the lck and we've got some issues to talk about at the very bottom of the pool. And one of those is unfortunately quickly showing themselves to be Nongshim. And this series does them no favors. Yeah, and unfortunately, I mean, this is... We've talked about the LCK being a top-heavy league in years past. But this honestly feels like it's two different leagues now. Early on here, still in spring. But top five versus bottom five, it's, it's not even close. This series showcased it. The other series today, Gen G versus the Bros, who have looked even more underwhelming than Nongshim here to kick things off. And maybe it wasn't as dominant out of Gen G compared to D, but this series was never in question. And it doesn't matter how many changes Riot makes to the game, we are always just left in an Azir Corky meta. It doesn't end. I, and, and there's no excitement in Azir at Corky at this point in time. Maybe. Oh, why like the small little asterisk that says at some point we go long enough in a stretch where you go, okay, maybe bring them back in. Let's see. A and then you see a up. rocket doing 60% of someone's health bar. <laughs> and you remember the times why you don't need them always in the meta type of situation, especially when you got Chovy piloting these type of champions. Gen G, calm, cool, collected today in the way that they were winning. Sure, I think you can maybe nitpick a little bit about the early games in this series and give maybe some credit to at least this, whatever little credit you can in the series to OK Savings Bank and what they were able to do. But absolutely, you look at this game too for Gen G and the way things really took off for Trovi and Pays. This was all about Gen G today. And this is with a couple of mid lane bands going the way uh, of Chovy. And then, yeah, pops out the Jace mid, something we haven't seen too much of in 2024. Ends up getting, you know, double digit kills alongside him and Pays. Game two was the one where Gen G was just kind of styling and having a whole lot of fun getting some kills. And we finally did get to see Canyon on, you know, this absolutely apparently busted brand jungle pick, something we've been waiting for. But then he's quickly back on Maokai duty in game two. 
Yeah, the, the, what's going on there, guys? Come on, you're giving him a little bit of flash. How is that busted? That's how it goes, man. That is that what that tree be doing out there in the jungle. But I want to talk about that brand because I think this is one of those champion picks that is going to be a little bit fresh, of course, for a lot of people looking at how stale the meta has been, how stale the rotation has been in the jungle. Getting a champion like Brand is, is very much a difference maker in the game. Yeah, anything that isn't Maokai is exciting. <laughs> Even Rel. Remember how excited we were for Rel oh. jungle last year when it was popping up? And now... We had that bar real low, man. Well, when it's a full year of this, I, I, so many of these picks have carried over from 2023. I genuinely thought there were going to be enough changes that we'd have a big meta shape up. And I know it's still very early. A lot of teams are still adapting, trying to find what the little secret sauces are in this new meta. But so many carryover picks from last year i'm praying praying and hoping that we get that from the lcs this weekend with the live patch Woo. coming on through give us some extra spice and hey maybe even the lec as they move towards that you know uh winter knockout stage maybe we do get a little bit more creativity and spice coming through this is how you get the lcs at the forefront of influencing pro play is just put them on the patch a few weeks ahead of everybody else and then that's the only league they can look to, to maybe have some changes. LPL action today, first of the English broadcasts, because they're only Thursday to Sunday, those Monday to Wednesday games. It's only going to be uh, LPL in Chinese channels. But uh, Weibo making their debut. And of course, you recall the shy taking at the very least the spring split off. Don't know what's going to be going on with him for summer. And then the other change coming into this year was Zhao Hao coming in for the double Zhao synergy <laughs> as he replaces Wei Wei Zhao Hao and Zhao Hu, both looking pretty good on the day against Rare Adam. Yeah, and you know, I think this is one of those ones where we can talk about the competition level and where the expectations should be, even with the shy taking this little break away from Weibo Gaming. The expectation for this team had to be that you'd be able to take care of business against a rare Adam. But yes, looking on the day and then rolling on through, you got to be giving your props over to Mr. Shahu and what he was able to do and how calm he was in, in carving up that mid lane. Yeah, a pair of Talia games out of him and he. Definitely had some great uh, Weaver's Walls, cutting everybody off, kind of controlling the map. That was the highlight for me out of him. He picked up one of the MVPs, Crisp, ends up grabbing the other. And, you know, it still took... Game one was definitely uh, very back and forth, and Weibo honestly shouldn't have won that game. They end up getting uh, a Baron steal to just walk in and steal it. But still, I mean, it's hard to gauge. This is... We forget that this is a World Finals Weibo roster. You can talk about the path that they took to get there but with the top side changing i know a lot of people thinking feeling like zhao hao as the season progresses might end up actually being an upgrade over weiwei yeah and that, that is something that i think is going to be important to keep track of as everyone looks at the expectations i like you bring up where weibo was last year because so many people are very quick to forget about that type of situation and of course realizing so much of that identity was around that top side and what the shy was able to do. Of course, there are gonna be those questions to see. I still think we're in that part of time where we need a, a little bit more runway room to determine exactly where in this early, you know, spring landscape they'll fit in in the rest of the LPL. You don't want to pencil them into the finals after one series? <laughs> you sure? <laughs> I want to be a little bit cautious, especially when it comes to the other threats that we are gonna talk about and deal with in the LPL. Well, it took one game for I saw people to be calling this new LNG roster frauds because they lost that game three to Thunder Talk Gaming. And truthfully, you got to shout out, especially in that third game, both UCAL and 1XN in the bot lane were playing at an incredibly high level. And just seeing how happy Thunder Talk was, this is game one of the regular season for both of them. And UCAL's jumping out of his chair. Everyone's excited. So obviously, Pretty big upset. Yukal is certainly a player that we have seen many ups and downs in a team perspective and as well individually in his own performance. But every now and then, you get one of these ones, one of these gems that comes through and you get the clutch performance, making sure that he's the difference maker. And yeah, we're talking about that upset against LNG. I think people are going way overboard talking about the, the bust for this roster right away after this little slip up against Thunder Talk. 
and you know way way obviously ended up coming over here to replace tarzan and scout looks pretty good still uh, for a couple uh, maybe game one less so game two but uh, game one and two but um yeah it's one game uh, we're not overreacting call it lng frauds more more so than anything i'm i'm impressed with thunder talk that they were able to come back from losing that game two and then end up taking it in the third game maybe dark horse playoff squad I think so much of our focus always tends to be trying to track these teams towards the path or already at that elite status. We forget about the squads like a Thunder Talk that can provide these type of rumbles, these type of mix-ups, and find themselves in a position, as you said, where you can look at them as a dark horse for these pictures in the LPL. And we always bring up dark horses in the LPL because no other league seems to find that one dark horse that is always the needle in everybody's side come playoff time. And yeah, making a miracle top four finish or something like that. But the team comp out of them in this third game with, again, that brand jungle sighting who gets a nice Baron steal. But whenever Hoya and the Udyr wasn't there, this is the squishiest team <laughs> comp we've seen all year with the Tristana, Lucian, Nami, and Brand. And, and as tanky as Udyr is, because he's certainly tanky enough to make up for a couple of champions being quite squishy, yeah, it was extremely obvious, any of these team fights, and especially when the target selection was on point on the side of LNG, you were zip, zip, zapping guys, left, right, and center type of thing. You bring in that Udyr, you settle things down for the squad, you get that damage coming through from your squishies. That was the ticket for Thunder Talk innovation a change a little spiciness is what we want to be seeing especially when it results in wins so maybe other teams will follow suit but it's a 1-0 start for thunder talk heading into week two action for the lcs week three over in the lec and god you know it really feels like eight teams and two games it's so slow before you have enough data to actually be having any formed opinions about these squads you need to get, you know, some type of early inklings. You can find little bits in there, but you can't bite too hard is the type of thing, as you mentioned, because you got to get those games. You got to give him that runway time to see how things are going to go, where that turnaround is, if it's possible for some of these teams. Week two, getting through and into that live patch territory. We're going to start to see how teams adapt and how well they want to push it to the limit on the live patch. And jumping off the page for me in terms of matchup, it's both the NRG matchups because they're even more difficult uh, to base off of week one because they get smashed by Cloud9 and then they go up against Dig, who's one of the worst squads. So where does NRG actually fit in? They're matching up against 100 Thieves. Love to see Sniper versus Dokla in that top lane matchup. And then on day two action, they are matching up against FlyQuest, which... You know, that's probably the main, whoever wins that you're feeling like is the main rival to Cloud9. So very excited to see the defending champs make a statement this weekend. Yeah, this is a great week to looking at NRG, as you mentioned, the, the 100 Thieves matchup, a general sniper up against Mr. Doklan, seeing how you can carve yourself up against them. And especially one where, again, on paper, you look at it and you say, okay, NRG, if you're the NRG from last year, the summer champions, the one that gets to the knockout stage at Worlds, you're going to take care of this 100 Thieves lineup and set yourself up for, of course, we're talking about that matchup with FlyQuest. This is that one where you do need to prove you are the 2023 Summer Champions. You are this team that's going to be in contention with Cloud9 for that top. Going to be someone that either, you know, heck, maybe it doesn't have to be this week. Maybe it doesn't have to be next week. But when we get to that best of series, we are going to be that challenge for you. Getting that win against FlyQuest or FlyQuest gets it against NRG really does push them head and shoulders above everybody else into that role. And the fly side of things for me, new patch, as we mentioned, assuming these double support items are going to be gone the way of the dinosaur pretty quickly. That means this week for me is when you see all this hype for Masu be realized and be a focal point. You've heard his teammates, you've heard other players, anyone who followed him through challengers are super excited about this kid. And for me, this is the week and a, a tougher schedule for FlyQuest with Team Liquid and NRG, as we mentioned. I'm ready for him to take player of the week honors. That's how big he's going. 
as we were talking about with FlyQuest, you, you know, you saw almost everything that you wanted to see out of them last week. You got to see, you know, uh, you know, Bwipo and, and Inspired really show, hey, no rust on them. The boys are ready to go. They are still those players that we have talked about and have known about. Jensen as well, stepping in and doing strong in the mid lane. You go to that bottom lane, which was good. But of course, yes, as you mentioned, you didn't really get that opportunity to see them pop off, see them flex and show what skill they've got. This is going to be that week for me. Then we always got to check in, of course, on the big favorites, Cloud9, Dignitas, and Shopify Rebellion on the docket, which means the real question is, are they going to be on the Rift for more than an hour this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I'm, I'm, I'm risking it, and I'm saying no when I'm looking at that one. I think it's going to be real quick against Dignitas, but then, of course, I'm hoping... The Shopify Rebellion one gives us a little bit of a wrinkle. I'm thinking maybe, maybe, just maybe, we get Insanity stepping up into something hype, maybe busting out something on the live patch, taking it to Cloud9 and Jojo Pyun, because that's what's going to be necessary to equal the playing field against a squad like Cloud9, how good, how dominant they have early shown themselves to be. I mean, if he's pulling out Zach mid, I'm ready to see what else this <laughs> dude's uh, got cooking on this live patch, because being able to adapt is going to, be one of the main reasons you're a top team in the LCS for this split. LEC, we're already at the final week of round one action. I forget what they even named the different uh, rounds at this point. But this is top eight going to the next round. And obviously, it's pretty impossible to predict what these standings are going to look out. But when you go top to bottom, number one, BDS at five and one. Look like they're sitting pretty to finish first because their three matchups, they play both Rogue and Carmine Corp are at the bottom of the standings. If they go something like two and one, they've got that locked up. Which is good news for BDS. I think a lot of people were on varying levels of the scale on where the expectations were for BDS after last year, whether we would see a, a bit of a regression or not an adaptation or whether they would show up with the lessons from that uh, event and take it to the LEC. And I think we are starting to see a little bit more signs where it's leaning towards taking those lessons and improving the way that they've looked throughout this part of the winter split. They've definitely showed that they are more diverse, multifaceted, can play different styles already, still very early than we were seeing out of 2023. The bottom of the table, which is actually where it's important because two of them are the splits over for them. And obviously, Carmine Corp at the top of that conversation at 0 and 6. They do play, have a head to head against Rogue uh, to kick things off, which is obviously. I think if they lose that one, they're going 0-9. It's a, it's a dark, dark time for Mr. Carmine Corp and what we've got for them this week. Because, yes, you lose that one to Rogue. It's that quick trip to the 0-9 infamous speed run through the winter split of the LEC. And as much as we know about, you know, yes, there's some room, some time, silver linings you can pick out by being one of those two teams knocked out. We know that is a serious setback compared to everybody else that is continuing on this rotation, continuing on in the path of preparation, practice, all these ones and getting tested on stage against that top competition. Missing out on that is going to be critical for Car Carmine Corp. And I mean, 0 and 9 is great for the beams, but even if they're sitting at 1 and 8 and end up missing out, like you are going to be incredibly disappointed with the start. Um, if I've seen some of the voice comms that they do, and it is Upset and Bo talking 90% of the time. Upset is even... You never see the 80 carry being the one micromanaging some of the players on the squad, and that is a recipe for, well, 0-6, I'd say. Yeah, disaster is an easy way to spell it. And when you look at what it is, I think, you know, Bo is extremely vocal for the squad. The question is whether anybody is really listening is another thing that I look at with that type of situation, which I think we've seen from Bo before. So as well, that was something I knew that could be something. And, and he arise. sounds, to his credit, number one, his English is much better and he's much more calm than we were seeing out of the Vitality communication. I, I don't think it's a problem with Bo. I think it's more so the problem with Karma and Corp and the rest of the squad not yeah. listening to that instruction. And then as well, you bring in Upset, kind of taking more of this shot calling, micromanaging type of role, which look, I'm all for players developing extra skills and having another facet and all these things, which is fantastic. 
But if Upset is the one doing that on your team and you've got Targamus being as silent as he is, that is not a recipe for success. Yeah, there's no top tier team where the support is basically mic turned off for the majority of the game. So one of many issues uh, for K Corp. Obviously, then you get to this middle of the pack, four teams tied at four and two. So you know the standings are going to shuffle all over, but... Fnatic plays both G2 and Team Heretics, a couple of other 4 and 2 squads. So that's the opportunity for Fnatic to either separate from that middle of the pack or just make it even more condensed. Yeah, it really is a, a prove yourself type of weekend for Fnatic into the territory of where you are. Are you this elite? Are you one of the front runners or are you just the rest of the pack in the LEC is going to be the answer I think we get from this squad given the strength of their schedule this week. And it's, you know, we've alluded to it a bit. It's a bit bizarre to see Humanoid playing at this level this early. But, I mean, for me, he's pretty easily been the best mid laner in Europe so far this split. Yeah, I think without question what we have seen from him, the control that he has had, the dominance that he has been able to exert, and the importance that he has had for this Fnatic team, no question that all equals up to the guy that is the front runner for me right now, MVP of the LEC Winters. And it's... The potential and the highlights are always there, even when he's not playing super well. What's different this split is I'm not left scratching my head saying, why is this guy here? Why is he dying randomly over here? All the random deaths, they have they haven't been there these first six games. It has been more clean. That is the way you got to be looking at this one a lot less of these random excursions that end up setting you behind or not netting really anything and netting your opponent all that time and advantage type of stuff. Ain't any of that messing around with, with Humanoid this time. It is the Humanoid dominating in the early winter split. And I feel like a lot of that is, I mean, speculating here, but it's just focus, right? It's being really locked in and not being lazy with the recall, lazy pushing an extra wave, getting some extra CS. He seems hyper-focused. The same trash talk hilarious Humanoid uh, is playing, but... We're getting way more of those highs and a lot less of those lows, which makes me feel good about Fnatic going forward for this playoff run. But that is it today for League Unlocked. Thank you all you beautiful people for joining us. As always, Eric and Mark here with you, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.